love your background. Thank you. Uh, really, <laughs> really enjoyed the show. Love the art. Um, yeah, uh, very cool. Awesome. It's adorable. Hey, Rod, how you doing? <laughs> Hi, Z. Nice to see you. I'll do a quick intro. Keep on back! Hi, this is Ron from PLCCulture.com. Z, Brendan, how are you? Good, how are awesome. you? Great. Uh, so excited to speak with you both. Um, such a cool show. So congratulations on that. V, I'm going to start with you. Um, Gremlins is iconic. Um, so how does it feel to see your name up there next to Steven Spielberg? I mean, I mean, I, I would be lying if I said it didn't feel awesome, you know, having grown up watching his movies and being so inspired. But, you know, so many people worked on this show, like so many incredible collaborators uh, from, you know, Brendan, Dan Crawl, who was there from day one, um, are incredible uh, art directors. And, you know, just really like everybody who worked on the show, it was just such a labor of love. And you can even you can tell it from the detail of the all the artwork in the background. <laughs> but it did all start with uh, Z. This is uh, the very well-deserved that he's up there with Spielberg for this. I was like, why isn't my name first? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, um, for both of you, uh, obviously Spielberg is, is, I mean, legendary isn't even enough, but um, I would love if you could talk a little bit about if there's any storytelling style or anything um, that you drew from his work that you wanted to make sure to just kind of pay homage in this series at all. Uh, Brendan? Brendan, do you want to talk yeah, about the, the, yeah. the... the art style and the camera? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Something we really wanted to make sure we captured in the look of the show was both the handmade practical effects quality of like 80s Amblin films, especially the original Gremlins with the puppets, but Amblin in general of that era. And also how dynamic uh, the camera work was. Like when you think about like those classic like Amblin set piece kind of sequences, the way the camera moves, the way they're directed, uh, that's stuff that's not always possible in like traditional 2D animation. So we wanted to find a way to kind of blend these two desires. And that led us to our art style, which was kind of like a two and a half D where we had uh, CG characters and the ability to move cameras in kind of a CG space, but using, um, 2D hand-painted backgrounds or uh, laying textures over structures um, so that we really could create um, a look that uh, our supervising producer, Dan Crawl, um, coined the phase of like, we're aspiring to be the art of book, like not the kind of polished, finished version, but to have still that handmade quality about our show. And that came straight from Spielberg and from Amblin. I really love the way you phrase that because I actually love art of books. It's some of my Same. favorite things to collect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and so, Brendan, to that point, were there any other um, shows or anything else that you kind of drew inspiration from in creating this the, this look? <laughs> there actually was uh, the studio we worked with in France, uh, Blue Spirit, uh, it's the animation studio, did a short called Bats uh, that Dan found early on when we were trying to explore. We had this conceptual idea of like this art of book of two and a half D, but we were trying to find examples, especially when we were trying to explain this to various artists or to our studio. Um, and Dan found this short bass that was fantastic and absolutely captured it. And I was so grateful that we ended up getting to work with uh, that, that partner studio overseas. Um, the other one, as we were in the process of uh, developing the show, Spider-Verse came out. And that also was kind of a great thing to look at and be like, okay, this thing we have only talked about is possible. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, I'm definitely gonna do my Googles to find that short if possible. Yeah. I think that's fascinating. Now, yeah. uh, Z, I, I think it's, uh, this, the setting of this story is really cool. Um, and in some ways like reclaims this uh, backstory that, that demanded to be told. But 1920s China, like what kind of research did you go into uh, making sure that this is like an authentic story being told? So, you know, a lot of what was really appealing to me about um, 1920s China as a backdrop is um, actually a lot of the Chinese spirits and creatures and monsters from Chinese mythology that populate the show are, are kind of like stories and horror stories that I heard when I was a kid and that definitely scared me. Um, we even have things like um, the Chinese vampire, the Jiangxi, which, you know, when I was a kid, totally traumatized by watching those 80s <laughs> horror movies that are like kind of hokey and kind of funny but also like incredibly terrifying when you're young 
And early on in the writer's room, you know, it was, a, it was kind of a two pronged approach. One was, you know, what was the real world Shanghai and China like during this time? Um, even things like what neighborhood is uh, the Wing family medicine shop set in? And what are the different backdrops? Uh, and we actually have a big map of China that we kind of charted where the characters go over the course of the first season. And then there was the mythological um, spirit and creatures aspect of the research, which was about finding creatures and spirits that maybe American audiences wouldn't know about and how to weave them through the story. So they really, um, they really create like the obstacles for our characters that kind of bind them together. And at the end of the day, this is really a story of friendship between Gizmo and Sam and L um, and uh, and Sam's family. So, um, yeah, that was the approach. Yeah, and we did work with a consultant to just kind of always uh, make sure we were kind of handling things accurately. Uh, and also, I mean, to the point where it's cool. There are like, like he was saying, we picked a specific neighborhood in Shanghai and made sure we got like photo reference from the time of like, okay, our shop actually looks like it could fit on this block or. Um, one of our designers, uh, Micah Severe, took it to the level of like, I think he could actually build a 1920s train now, thanks to all the research and like how uh, particularly he got with every single detail. And we also had um, a very large contingent of Asian American artists working on the show, uh, whether it was from writers to um, the board artists uh, and our directors and, and character designers. And I think, you know, uh, having, that kind of um, reference between all of us, uh, you know, people that you know, the for, for the culture, just from our from our parents and growing up, you know, certainly helped. And then we all watched Kung Fu Hustle together. <laughs> that was one of the one of the one of the first movies we watched as a whole group. I love that. Uh, I love. Oh my! You all just gave me a lot of meat that I'm just marinating <laughs> on. The first thing about you said about the Chinese spirits that freaked you out, you know, I had a lot of those stories too, you know, at, from Korean mythology. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because Gremlins fits right there, right? It was this super cute looking movie in 1984 that terrified me and a lot of kids, <laughs> um, but really resonated. Um, our parents traumatized us so many times. But <laughs> um, <laughs> Z, like you talked about the Asian American like um, artists and such working in background. And of course you're, you have this incredible cast of, of Asian Americans and, and also Gabrielle, like she's amazing too. Like how important and cool was it for you to be able to make this show jam packed with diverse voices and creatives in front of and behind the screen? Um, I mean, I, I, it was, it, I mean, it was absolutely incredible. And I, I think, you know, Brendan and I felt very supported by the studio. Um, in order to do that. And, you know, a lot of times in an industry where there maybe has not been the same history of talent development for people of color, you sometimes have to give people their first jobs or you have to bump them up from, you know, you have to promote them. And what I felt very thankful for was we found the best people for the jobs. And sometimes it was the first time, you know, taking a step up, but we just knew that um, if we wanted a, a an Asian American, a, a, a lot of Asian Americans kind of behind the camera, but that's what we would have to do. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they killed it, you know, our, our, our directors, our board artists, you know, they were, I, I think there is something about also just for me personally, you know, 10 years ago, even if there were Asian Americans or Asians in front of the camera, there weren't necessarily Asian creators behind the camera. And I certainly, when I was coming up through independent film, felt that loneliness and to now be in a position where I can hire other up and coming Asian American creators and artists. I mean, that was really meaningful to me. That's why I love you Z. That's why I've been following you for a while and it means so much to me, like you said, for the culture. But Brendan, I, I still want to hear you talk about that issue too. Like why is it so important for you to work with Z and create this project that just lifts up so many diverse voices? I mean, I think it's the best version of the project. Also, I think it's uh, it's the version that hasn't been told. It's the more authentic version. It's the more interesting version. It, it is like, especially um, Michael Chang, who's our supervising producer, uh, another supervising producer on the show, he really kind of helped lead and build our story theme. The amount of times that like there'd be a small detail of like, oh, having like a throwaway reaction or gesture that was more authentic to the characters at the time and just honestly usually with something like it's funnier it's more specific it's 
a story is always better the more specific the details get. And building a show this way creates that experience. Yeah, I love that. And um, I think it really does shine through in this story. So it's a credit to, to all of you and the creatives. Um, Z, how many seasons of a story have you, do you have in your head or have you and Brendan worked out? <laughs> so, you know, what's funny is uh, because of the length of time it takes for animation to, to happen, I mean, we're almost done with the second season in terms of, uh, I mean, yeah. we're in post for it. And Brendan and I have talked a lot about what subsequent seasons could be. Um, there's a lot of runaway because this first season takes place 60 years before the original movies do. And so my hope would be that we really get to watch these characters um, develop and um, go to different places, go on crazy adventures, yeah. and we start to bridge that gap. I mean, um, and I would love this to be something where, you know, as fans kind of get older, they're also watching the characters get older and, and develop and and uh, and take part in different types of stories. Yeah, no, I'm happy to create the boyhood version of uh, <laughs> Sam and Gizmo's lives. We just keep checking back in on them every year, season to season, uh, for 60 seasons. Yeah, it's, they're really, it, their dynamic is super fun. L as well, like it's just, it's a, it's a fun friendship and fun world to play with. 